He needed a few things from that audience, buy-in, alignment, and eventually, money. Jeff was ambitious, he was smart, he was an analytical thinker, and he was energized. He was the kind of guy you'd want to root for. He wanted to get that audience in front of him from the red light of risk to the green light of go. Go, get a next meeting. Go, get me a check. Go, and be on my advisory board. I sat there wondering how was Jeff going to do. By the time he finished his presentation, I was sitting there in my chair. I was uncomfortable. I didn't really understand what he had talked about. I wondered if I was alone. I had to be the only person in the room that didn't follow. It had to be my fault. And then it happened. The gentleman behind me raised his hand and he said, Jeff, can you go back to slide four? I don't totally understand the problem that your technology is trying to solve. And that was it. That was the moment that Jeff knew where his audience was. It's the moment all speakers are trying to avoid. Jeff had his audience at one of those lights, but it was the red light still. He had not successfully moved his audience to the green light of go. I quick swiveled and looked at Jeff to see what his nonverbal communication was after hearing this news. His shoulders had sunk, he had breathed a deep sigh, and you could sort of see the cartoon bubbles above his head about what he might have been thinking. Here's what I think he was thinking. Wait, what? You didn't understand what I just told you about? My baby? My new innovation? Which parts didn't you get? I had 30 slides. It was packed with data. I told you everything I know in just 20 minutes. Time. But he dutifully grabbed his clicker and he went back 26 slides to slide four and he began to re-explain his big idea. Have you ever felt like this in an audience? Have you ever felt lost? Have you ever been the one who's lost your audience? It's not a good feeling. And I sat through many, many more presentations the following year, and I kept seeing more and more mediocre presentations from founders, from leaders, and especially in science and technology. These are the leaders driving our economies, our innovations, our world. And taking a complex idea and simplifying it is not easy. I am not a chemical engineer. I am not a software engineer. I am a message engineer. I have two degrees in rhetoric, which is the science and art of persuasion. And all of these leaders were hitting way too much at head, logos, and not nearly enough at heart, pathos. And I figured there was something that I needed to do. I took messages and some messengers into my messaging lab and I got to work and I figured out where the gears were stuck. I decided to take this out for a test drive, my new model, and see if it was going to work. So fast forward, I'm working with Jen Henderson. We're in the coffee house in Fort Collins, Colorado, and she's brought to me her slide deck. She is another tech founder, former corporate executive, and has another big idea. We're sitting there at the table. She's walking me through her sloppy copy, and I have that familiar sting. Ah, it's not quite doing it for me, Jen. Let me do a few things with you. This time I had a solution. So I grabbed my paper, I sketched my model, and I walked her through the logic behind it. She said, oh my gosh, this makes so much sense. I completely understand where I've been going wrong. We reworked her slide deck, added narrative, brought in a hook, and threaded it all the way through her presentation so that she had completeness and confidence. I said, Jen, what did you learn today? She said, I learned the power of rhetoric and the engine that it is underneath your model. I learned the power of the five-point story arc and the power that it has under, under your model. And I learned that I need to hook 
orient, win, tell, and offer my audience with your how-to model. How-to, hook, orient, win, tell, offer. She went out and closed $500,000 in her first few months of using this model. She won first place at an accelerator in our region, and now, a few years later, she has closed over $35 million in funding and is running a company of over 100 individuals around the US. She's living the dream that she wanted to live back in 2018. The coolest part is that Jen and others like her in the startup community aren't the only ones winning with this model, which totally surprised me. There are now fund managers in VC firms using this model and winning. There are PhD researchers using this model in government labs and winning. There are executives at top companies all over the United States and in the world, top Fortune 100 companies, using this model and winning with internal meetings, board meetings, alignment meetings with other divisions in their companies because it works. There are times when we cannot stand for mediocre, and right now is one of those times. Science, technology, innovation is thriving, it's growing, it's driving our economies and our world. We need messages and messengers who can nail it every time, and the how-to model is that way. The only question is, are you ready to hit go?